the season has just started and you're seeing James Milner and Jordan Henderson playing. Which teams in the top six do James Milner and Jordan Henderson start for at this stage in their career? Mm, mm. None. These, guys, these are guys that probably won't be starting for Crystal Palace. Like James Milner, you saw him in that match against United. Yeah, Every yeah, single time yeah, yeah. a young, like, okay, they say it's fit. He runs around during preseason, a thousand, blah, blah, blah. Every single time he makes contact with a young, athletic young man, true. he's on the floor. That's like, he can't win a duel because these guys are just younger and fitter than him. Thank you for the memory, James Milner, but it's time to go. Jordan Henson, thank you for the memories, but it's time to go. And unless Liverpool don't invest in midfield, which is the most important area of the pitch, like, we can't control games for anything. Henderson has been a cost for three of the five goals we've considered have been yeah. as a result of yeah. Henderson's yeah. lazy touches in the midfield. The shot was good. I, I think it's interesting that we're dressed pretty similarly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> From top to bottom. Black, black, combat, Nike. Nikes. Well, these are Jordan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I mean, Nike TV now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, quickly, um, yesterday, UEFA Champions League group stage. And I think the biggest news was that group of dead that Barcelona Ooh. found themselves in. And Ooh. I think right now, we're wearing like the proper attire to actually <laughs> mourn Barca's, <laughs> Barca's experience in the Champions League this around? season, bro. Because I don't see them coming out of this group. You don't think they can, I don't don't think they can get out over Inter? I do not think so. I think, I think um, Barca, they've made some good signings that if they play well, like, they can, they can do it now. Lewandowski, Rafinha, Dembele on fine form. I feel like that attack might... They might surprise a few people this season. But with the Bayern Munich, they will definitely lose yeah, both Bayern games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Bayern are going. Bayern are coming first in that group. Really, it's a fight for the second it's place. A, I think Inter so. And Barcelona. I, I and think so. Yeah, I guess Inter have brought back in Lukaku now, so it's going to be a fight. And yeah, I wouldn't, you can probably bet on it on Ben Vena brought. Yeah, I'm not sure which way I'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like down the line, we'll, you, you know, we'll have more confidence exactly, in seeing exactly. how, how maybe it might go. But I think everybody is basically counting on Victoria Pusen. I mean, I mean, that would be, I mean <laughs> if they go through it, it will be the story of the tournament. I think so. so. I, mean, I think as so. As a so football fan, I won't mind that, to be honest. That's also something that's interesting, the fact that it is football and anything can happen. Mm -hmm. So this is also something that we can look out for and mm -hmm. look forward to. And, you know, if, if they get some scraps against maybe Inter, maybe Barca, definitely not Bayern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Inter, Barca, it definitely will be pick up something at home, like these home games in Champions League, like if you get the atmosphere right, you can just stun any opponent. And Barca and Inter aren't, they're not the most formidable of opponents right now. That so. If your crowd gets behind you, Okay. You will get something out of them. Which, which other group um, stands out for you? Um, I think the Liverpool group was quite interesting because we have two, um, two decent sides in there. They're not really top European sides. I think as far as first seeds go, we got a decent pick there. But the fact that it's Napoli as well coming at the third seed. So yeah, it's, um, it's tricky games. Like I was saying, away games. Going to Ajax is not going to be easy. Going to Napoli is not going to no, be yeah, easy. Fine. These are fans that have a lot of culture. They have history. They're going to be up for the occasion. So. You would expect Liverpool to go through, but me, I guess we'll get to all this later. But if you keep an eye on what's going on right now, it's not that simple, though. Like right, I said, right, you can bet on your bear winner, right. but it's hmm, not that straightforward. Yeah, I, I think that group A is also, is also uh, pretty interesting for me because Liverpool, I, I put Liverpool aside, but the other three teams seem to be, you know, in and around mm -hmm. the same, you know. Yeah, yeah, they can know. all. You, you can't call any of those games, really, exactly. any of those games in that group, like, you don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. Like, some of the results they've had for this season, I actually can If I had beat them, I am too. Who knows? Like, it could happen. Uh, but for other uh, Premier League sides, Chelsea are in Group E. Um, they have Inter, they have AC Milan, they have um, Salzburg, Albi Salzburg, and Dinamo Zagreb. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I would expect them to go through Yeah, to like, that, they will, they will group go through there. You can, I'll tell you to put that one, bet on that one. Exactly. Right. And, and, and Man City too, expected to do the business. Sevilla, yeah. Dortmund. Oh. Man City and, I mean, it's a tricky group, but yeah, Man City will definitely go. Mm, I, I guess so, what's so. good to see there is who goes through between Dortmund and Sevilla. That's, mm. those are the big games. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. And uh, moving on from that, but um, still. Quick question, what oh, group yeah. is Man in? What group is Man in? Is this boy alright? Is this guy okay? <laughs> I mean, editor, editor, cut, cut it out. Cut, cut that nonsense out. Well, let, let, let's go back to what's actually real. Let, mm. You know, mm. what's real? Mm. Liverpool's problems are real. I mean, <laughs> so, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you for your right. win. Um, yeah, good job. Um, I don't really have much shit to say. Don't, don't, don't just come here on smoke. I mean, don't, don't just, on smoke, don't, just don't just, don't just congratulate me on my win. Right. Actually, um, 
tell me that I was right. I was. With, you know, I, on what are the odds on the previous episode? What, what were your I odds? talked about not betting on Liverpool. Okay, so winning. congratulations to Tenet you know, and the Manchester saying, United uh, faithful <laughs> on their first win against Liverpool since the Jose Mourinho era, since before the last World Cup, since John Terry was still a footballer. <laughs> Yeah, congratulations then, but really, um, good goals. Um, I have Rashford in my FPL, so I'd like to see so, that. Yeah, um, Sancho, um, very big goal for him, very big moments. And yeah, this could be um, the spark that you guys need to turn your season around and things. I think Casemiro came out in the beginning. Yeah, see, so it could be a new dawn. But um, I want to actually talk about Liverpool and how this season, if we're not careful, <laughs> it's going to get out of hand, though. Right. And the reason is our ownership. I think, let me, just, let me just quickly drop this, you don't think it is the um, Jürgen Klopp seventh season curse? I mean, for some, if something happens one time, you can't say it's a curse now. Only one time, it happens <laughs> with, with uh, um, Dortmund, Dortmund. the club before Dortmund, he actually took them to relegation. He, he got them, them out of relegation. He couldn't bring them back. No, he didn't. No, he left yeah. them in the league now. I can eat. Come on now. Club's not going to get relegated. Like, yeah. like, as, in, as in, can we be realistic okay, okay. here? You're saying it's the uh, ownership. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think it's not a seventh season curse. I think it's a case of Club has been turning water into wine at Liverpool since he arrived. Mm. And that can only go on for so long. Jesus and if Klopp. you look around, uh, Jesus Jesus if Klopp. you look around, the Premier League is turning into the Super League before our very eyes. Mm, Newcastle mm, has mm. passing out 75 M mm, and. Mm. Everybody is breaking. Forest, Nottingham Forest. Everything. Everybody is breaking their transfer Barchers. record right now, mm. and Liverpool are standing still. And this is because of our ownership. I want to give you a stat. Since Jurgen Klopp became the manager of Liverpool, mm. all these Premier League clubs, their owners have invested more into the club. Besides Manchester United. Manchester, Manchester United have invested more since Jurgen Klopp became in. Man City, Arsenal, Chelsea, West Ham, Spurs, Wolves, Aston Villa, Newcastle, and Everton. Why would you be in a situation where your club, mm. you've reached the top, you've won the Premier League, you've won the Champions League, now stay there, as in have a prolonged period of dominance, like how we see Manchester United, how we saw Chelsea do, and you just watch. And this was the same thing that happened when we won, we won the Premier League, we had, we had four centre-backs, Dejan Lovren was one of our four centre-backs. Mm. They sold Lovren in the summer, didn't replace him, went into the season with three centre-backs, which is just wrong. All three of the centre-backs got injured, every last one of them. Okay, sign a centre-back, you know what they did? They brought in Kabak, a guy that couldn't cut it at Norwich. Yeah, yeah, and then they yeah. brought in Ben Davis, I think Ben Davis, mm-hmm. Ben White, some random bloke from the championship who never played a game for the club. And that was how they wanted us to retain the Premier League title. Mm. That was never going to happen. By Klopp's miracles again, Klopp got us into the Champions League again with a bunch of children. Mm. Fine. Then that same season, you sell your most available midfielder in Gini Wijnaldum. Gini Wijnaldum used to play yeah. 38 games a season for us. You sell Gini Wijnaldum, you don't replace him. You go into a season thinking that Thiago Alcantara is 39, 30-year-old that's injury-prone and Naby Keita, who has proven to us over the last four years that you that cannot rely on him. Yeah, exactly. You it's go not... in, those are your two center mids. Now, both of them... So last season, they kind of survived. We hobbled all the way. I don't even know how, but they survived long enough that they alternated the injuries. Mm-hmm. You're lucky. You get away with that. Now, it's a new season again. We have the highest proportion of our squad is over 30 years old. Invest in your team. They have not invested. Now, we're playing three Premier League matches. The season has just started and you're seeing James Milner and Jordan Henderson playing. Which teams in the top six do James Milner and Jordan Henderson start for at this stage in their career? Mm, mm. None! These, guys, these are guys that probably won't be starting for Crystal Palace. Like James Milner, you saw him in that match against United. Yeah, Every yeah, single time, yeah, yeah. a young, like, okay, they say he's fit. He runs around during preseason, a thousand, blah, blah, blah. Every single time he makes contact with a young, athletic young man, true. he's on the floor. That's like, he can't win a duel because these guys are just younger and fitter than him. Thank you for the memory, James Milner, but it's time to go. Jordan Henderson, thank you for the memories, but it's time to go. And unless Liverpool don't invest in midfield, which is the most important area of the pitch, like, we can't control games for anything. Henderson, Henderson has been a cause for three of the five goals we've considered have been yeah. as a result of yeah. Henderson's yeah. lazy touches in the midfield. So right now, in a situation where it is Thiago Alcantara or Boss, as long as Thiago Alcantara does not play, anything can happen. Mm. Liverpool can get it. Like this weekend against Bournemouth, if they come with the right spirit, if we don't have Thiago, we're not going to control the ball. Our attack is going to be so disjointed from our midfield. Fabinho, who is our only midfielder, like I've said over the past five years, even he's moving funny now. And how much work do I want him to do? Like, he's the best passer in that midfield, he's the best tackler in that midfield. Like, why why exactly know? did he not start against Manchester United? Apparently, he's carrying an injury. And from the performances he's had in the first two games of the season, and com- even the way he looked when he came on, I believe he might be carrying an injury as well. Mm. So, right now, we're just in a situation where our whole midfield is barren. 
Okay, buy a midfielder. Midfielders are moving all around the guy. People are signing midfielders for less money than we would need to. They're saying no, they're waiting for Jude Bellingham. So Liverpool, I mean, we really have no... Jurgen Klopp was the beacon of hope. And it's actually funny that, considering that last season, we almost did a quadruple VM. As in, obviously, my heart was broken. I feel worse now than then. So yeah, it's... um. That was my little run there, and um, ah, it's exciting. It's a little run. It's <laughs> that <a> little run. <laughs> that's, uh, that's where we're at at the moment, and I think if something doesn't happen in this window, or if, if Thiago can just, they're even saying uh, Navigator wants to leave. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, no, I'm hearing Navigator. So if Thiago can just come fit and stay fit for the rest of the season, I think we're either going to be, like we're not going to be in a title race like last season, that's almost certain. We're going to be in a proper top four dog fight with the rest. And this is not the same case as that last time that we happened to make because guys have caught up now. Tottenham have caught up now. Ateta yeah. is doing stuff now. Ten Hag mm -hmm. might be a serious manager. Like Newcastle are coming up. If Newcastle True. are going to be spending money, it's clubs that Liverpool are going to bounce. If you're not willing to keep up, Newcastle will overtake us. We're going to get to a point where we're going to be in the market and people will go to, like, when club goes, and the money is at Newcastle. People could make that decision. Definitely. You could see that decision. Definitely. So yeah, it's exciting and um, and yeah. sad. <laughs> and sad. I mean, <laughs> let's see how it goes. <laughs> let's I mean, see how it to goes. To be very honest, um, it's it's all joy for me seeing um, Liverpool struggle. Um, but from a from a footballing point of view, you do not want to see the management and the ownership of the club uh, refuse to invest in the squad. In they're the cheap. Right way. They're cheap. So your right your way. problem is that your owners take our money. My problem is that my owners they don't want to put in money. Good to see. Liverpool fans in the doldrums. It's very good to see because your pride has gone on for too long. <laughs> and congratulations on the new era. Uh, let's see how it goes. Being in the bottom half of the, of the league, we still have below good. Manchester United now. We still have the, uh, the we still have top two manager in the league. Let's see if you can work some magic still, again. Still. again. Like, it, how long can he keep doing it? But pff, again, let's still see. Still below Manchester United. <laughs> How many happy. points? One point. How many points do you guys have? Still below. <laughs> well, uh, I will give them when I come back. Still below. Moving <laughs> on, weeks. moving on, moving on. Let us talk about the uh, Fantasy Premier League, uh, where last weekend, um, literally everybody's defenses was on mm -hmm. skates. Like, I like that, I like that. Let's all drop like, the points together. Right, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, but looking forward to the coming um, games this weekend, um, who are your picks? Who are those players that you feel like might make a difference, um, differentials. I don't know if I'll call Rodrigo differential again because mm. what he's done has been pressure. I think a lot of, yeah, of, of people players are getting people are picked up on that. Yeah. But at 6.3 million, I think that's a very good value buy at the moment. I think it's another thing I think might be a differential. I don't know how many people have made this decision yet. I'm kind of, but maybe replacing Trent Alexander-Arnold now and that's a lot of money. You mm. can get and like, you can still have a premium defender yeah. and have like 1.5 M to spend. Yeah, yeah. So you can use that to bolster your midfield. You could, um, yeah, there are a lot of moves that could be made. I think now the season has progressed. We know what's going on. Like we know Hurricane is going to look good. Mm -hmm. um, I guess some people might be regretting the Haaland decision, seeing that he might not settle in as quickly as we once thought. Mm -hmm. That would be something to consider. Like I've mentioned time and time again, Gabriel Jesus, that might be my captain this week, man. It's, it's owned by 80%. 80% now. now. Wow. wow. <laughs> owned by 80% now. Um, but for me, I would say, a little bit similar to what you said, but I have one one differential and I'll get there. Of course, Rodrigo, very, very good still at 6.3. He's banging in those goals. He's playing really well. He's getting bonus points. Mm -hmm. So definitely one player that you want to get in your team. Don't miss out on mm -hmm. a player that's coming up and mm -hmm. his value is increasing mm -hmm. and his bank, you know, he's getting you those points. So now is a good time it to get the last for, chance for to get him under you get seven, seven M. Under seven M, under six point five. Mm -hmm. Um another player, like you said, Trent, I already took Trent out mm -hmm. and I got Karen Trippier, who's Solid scoring team. goals, scoring free mm -hmm. kicks, mm -hmm. he's keeping maybe not really keeping clean sheets, but he's assisting he's with the goals and everything and he's getting well. bonus points yeah. as well. So that's somebody you can look at. Mm -hmm. And but for the differential that I wanted to say, if you've had um, Rashford. Mm, mm. I still have Rashford. For if now. you had Rashford, that's a good thing mm -hmm. to have him still because I feel like he's going to double down mm -hmm. and you know get you those points. Yeah, he's he scored confidence from that. From from the Liverpool game, I feel like he's going to be onwards and upwards for the guy. And you could see it in that game. He mm -hmm. was hungry for it. He was a threat throughout the game. He scored the goal. He could have scored more than one goal. Mm -hmm. And yeah, definitely a player that and. For, he's not too expensive too. Very cheap. So, very cheap. So that's and, and he's a mid strike. He'll he's a midfielder that's playing as a forward. He's exactly. registered as a midfielder, but he's playing as a forward. So another player, uh, player that's playing out of position. Oh, no. 
So definitely want to look out. For Another that. sneaky pick I think you should explore is Iberi Izzy. Um, mm. I think he's going to have his best season yet. Um, his link up with Zaha at the moment is he's yeah. having a coming of age season. Yes, and yes. keep an eye on him. He's going to pick up assists. He's playing in like that central area. So he's not on the wing anymore. Where he has to like work with all these. Like he's not tracking back that much. Mm-hmm. He's giving more license to create and he's been giving the keys to the attack. And yeah, look at Iberi. Yeah, it? definitely. Iberi is, a, is uh, that player who uh, Patrice Vieira has seen that, okay, he can shed some of the load off Wilfred Zaha, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. put it on Iberi mm-hmm. is a, and you know, and see how it works out. And the boy is actually, and he's, working he's performing, so far. he's performing Great under, under that weekend. pressure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's it for our FPL picks. Definitely something you should look at. And yeah, we might just create our league. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're already three games this, but, <laughs> but we just we just might do it, you know, for the fun of it. Yeah, you transfer your points over, so right? Uh, mm-hmm. and yeah, <laughs> but yeah, quick one. Um, question of today. Interesting. What is going on with Dele Ali? What exactly is the P with Dele Ali? He has moved on to Besiktas, 26 years of age. Remember. Uh, four years ago, thereabouts, he was valued at about a hundred million dollars. Rightfully so. Rightfully so, he was, um, I think he was the youngest midfielder to reach 50 goals in Premier League history, faster than like Lampard, faster than Gerard, Rudy. all that. He was, he's, I think he had a 20 goal season in the Premier League. Like, they really looked like he could be the next big thing. And mm. it's making me wonder, um, I guess the piggyback of the question is, was it? Was it Dele Ali's abilities or was it the way Pochettino used him? Because when you think about modern mm. football, like, is there really a role for Dele Ali in the modern football team? Like, teams don't play with the 10 anymore. He's like, at his best, he's like a supporting striker, like mm. a Thomas Muller. And I guess in certain big teams can accommodate that if you play that way. But most teams don't play that way anymore. And mm. I feel like he might be a victim of that as well. But he was also unfortunate with injuries. And I think yeah, even definitely. from a young age, he'd been an injury prone kind of player. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's true, but uh, besides uh, the way Pochettino used him and besides injuries, I think there has been conversation about his attitude towards mm, the game. Mm. Remember that uh, video, I think it was that all, Tottenham All or Nothing video uh, that came out and uh, Mourinho actually was telling him that you will regret it if you don't demand more from yourself. Mm-hmm. You, you know, time flies by for, for mm-hmm. footballers really quickly and that he, he was actually trying to get him to double down. Yeah, he, he told was. him, I don't want you to be the man of the match every game, but I need you to demand more of yourself. Mm-hmm. You have what it takes. But of course, we, we, there was always, he was always in the news for one thing or the other. Yeah, and he um, attitude. Yeah, and, and like whatnot. very good player, but um, I guess there was like, you could see the little like, like on the pitch, like the, um, I don't know what I'm looking for, but yeah, I guess the bad attitude summarizes, mm, but just like, I guess that. talking back to the referee, like mm. being cheeky, diving, like little kicks here and there. So it didn't make you question the attitude, but yeah, it's very sad to see, because that was a player with a lot of a potential. Lot of potential. Right. England could have benefited from that, because they do have midfield problems, like they need more creative midfielders, and you could have been the answer to that question. Mm. But at this point, going to Besiktas, that's Besiktas, man. Like, that's is there he coming back from there? I, I doubt, I doubt. Actually. You don't see you him know, back You, you hardly see players come from yeah. the Turkish league, especially Besiktas and Fenerbahce. Mm-hmm. And, and especially one that like, we've seen in the Premier League, I know that you're not a Premier League level anymore. Level, so you know. Now you've gone to bring it back. What are you going to have to show his, in Besiktas? His, his spell at Everton was disastrous. Yeah, that was quite dire. Yeah. disastrous. All right, that's a very good place to put a pin on it. But before we go, what are the odds on bet winner in Nigeria? So our wonderful friends at Bet Winner are doing a crazy awoof this weekend. So Bruh. these odds are, they're screaming at me. Mind blowing. So first of all, you can get Leicester City to beat Chelsea. Chelsea who just lost, by the way, at a whopping 7.5 odds. Whoa. I mean, it is, it's doable. That's Shh. no financial advice, obviously, but I'll just leave that there. And then um, another game, which will be an upset, obviously, is the Man City fixture against Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace have picked up some decent results at the moment. City mm. does drop points. And you can get Crystal Palace to beat Man City at 14.5. I mean, you can do the math there for yourself and know what, know what that means. <laughs> One or two calculations, make some decisions there. Another game, we have a derby in London, Fulham versus Arsenal. Mm. Fulham in decent form as well, mm-hmm, um, played mm-hmm, really mm-hmm. well, already got a result against Liverpool. Mm. Arsenal are in great form, 100% record. But if you're thinking that's where it's going to run out, you can get Fulham to be Arsenal at 9.4. Those are pretty impressive odds. And that's interesting as for well. me because I feel like Fulham this season might be that team that takes points off. Yeah, the they have, team. exactly. They've already done it against mm-hmm. Liverpool. I don't see why they can't do it against mm-hmm. Arsenal. Mm-hmm. I don't see any reason as well. And 
just to remind you, you can't, you don't only have to bet on Premier League games with oh. Betwinner. You can pick up some La Liga games. And uh, one set of odds that really stood out to me was the Barcelona Real Valladolid game. Obviously, Barcelona have they've made some decent signings. This season hasn't. The views haven't fallen off this season like mm -hmm. it tends to and do so far. Started off yeah, so they started off all right. But if you think um, like anything happens in football, you yeah, understand. Yeah, you know, yeah, and the move for an upset, <laughs> you can get Real Valladolid to beat them at 9.5 odds. Jeez. Pretty decent odds. Jeez. If you can just calculate everything I've done there, you can put together one cheeky accumulator there. If you're feeling Ooh, lucky, crazy. it could be a weekend, though. Crazy. <laughs> it could be a weekend. Yeah, and that's true. Talking about accumulators on Bet Winner Nigeria, we have awesome accumulators on there that are, you know, presets and you can tweak as well. That's one bonus that you can find only on Betwin and Nigeria. Besides that accumulator, you also get instant cash out on Betwin and Nigeria. You get your money right away. I don't think anything spells, you know, spells awesomeness um, beyond that. And do not forget, there's also the birthday special. On your birthday, you get some special, you know, interesting stuff um, out there for you. And there's also the Thursday special on Betwin and Nigeria. Only on Betwin and Nigeria. Terms and conditions apply. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Catch you guys in the next one. And that'll Peace. be all for now. Peace.